This is Mike Roth. Welcome to the Open Forum in the Villages podcast. In this show, we're going to talk to leaders in the community, leaders of clubs, and interesting folks who live here in the villages to give perspective of what's happening here in the villages and information that I think all villagers should have. We hope to add a new episode every Friday morning at 9 o'clock. This is Mike Roth. I'm here today with Rick Farrar. Rick is a relatively new resident of the Villagers and a participant in our Improvisational Theater Club and Boomer Humor. He also participates in some other theatrical endeavors, which we're going to hear about today. But Rick, before we get started, you know, I always start the show with a little bit of a joke. What kind of a chicken is the funniest? Gee, Mike, I, I really don't know. What kind of chicken is the funniest? It's a comedy hen. <laughs> I didn't say they were going to be good jokes. No, you didn't. You didn't promise that. Didn't promise that. Okay. So, Rick, why don't you tell us about, how, about yourself? How long have you been here in the villages? I've been here in the villages since last October. Okay. And you came from? Came from Denver after 26 years in Denver. Okay. I can understand why you got away from the Denver snow. And what was your background before coming to the villages? Well, like I said, in Denver, I was there for 26 years. I moved there originally. I worked for Sam's Club as a meat manager. And when I left Sam's Club, I decided to go into the restaurant business. So I worked at several uh, different restaurants. The last one was Hardee's, or as we call it back in Denver, Carl's Jr. Well, I recognize that those are two distinct, different uh, types of restaurants, but that's okay. In, in Denver, you worked in the meat department at Sam's Club? Yes, I was a meat manager. Oh, okay. I grew up in that business. Oh, okay. So do you recommend people buy meat at Sam's Club? Uh, yeah, they still have a good product. I just didn't I just decided to move on to something different. I was tired of being in the cold every day. I guess you're in the cold locker at the meat counter. Yeah, I was uh, in 32 to 36 degrees all day long. Mm -hmm. Now, did you also manage their fish or was that a separate manager? Was the fish manager? We didn't really have a fish department when I was there. Denver's too far from the ocean. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. A little bit. Okay. So, you get here to the villages, and what clubs are you a member of now? I am a member of the Improv Club, as mm -hmm. we discussed. I am also a member of Boomer Humor. And right before this podcast, I just came from a rehearsal for another club I'm in called Starlight Players. And with Starlight Players, have you been in any of their show productions? I was in one this May. 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 Yeah, we were. We had a production in May, and I did quite a bit for them. I seem to be the youngest member of the group, mm -hmm. so anytime there's something the extra that needs to be done, they say Rick will do it. Hey, that's what happens around here in the villages. And you've been on stage in at least one of our or two of our improvisational theater club shows. Yes. And you, you you have some big parts coming up in the October 28th show. This is the one at Rohan on, I think it's Saturday night, October 28th. Tickets are still available uh, online. And you can go to the villagesimprov.com, go to October 28th on the calendar, and there's a link there that'll take you right to the ticketing site for the show. Based on what you've seen in the Boomer Humor Club, how good do you think the show is going to be? Oh, I think the show's going to be excellent, and not just because I'm in it, but we have some very talented performers, and I, it's my passion, stand-up or improv. I, I just really love it, and I'm really grateful that there is an outlet for my silliness. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell you, our listeners uh, what you do on a regular basis because you're still working? Yes, I'm still working. I'm a manager for Bob Evans in the Villages. And they kind of, you know, say, well, we don't really need to pay to see the show because uh, we we get you here all the time. So you tell jokes at work? 
I'm constantly cutting up. I, I believe that my management style is such that I try to keep my crew happy and my guests happy. Mm-hmm. You want to give our listeners an example of a joke that you've done? <laughs> Uh, I would have to think of one. It's it's like when you ask a comedian, okay, so you're a comedian, so tell us a joke. (laughs) I uh, did tell one the other day. Oh, what I like to do is I I like to know my audience. So I work every Sunday. And on Sundays, I like to go out in the dining room and tell some church jokes. Well, that sounds like a good idea. A lot of people come directly from church to... Uh a late lunch at uh, Bob Evans. Yeah, I tell them all my jokes you can tell your pastor. And I have told these jokes to some pastors. Mm-hmm. So if you like, I can tell one of those. Try a pastor joke. Okay. There was a uh, gentleman stuck on, there was a man stuck on a deserted island. He'd been there for many years. And one day his prayers are answered when he sees a Coast Guard helicopter coming, landing on the beach, just landing on the beach. So he runs out to the pilot as the pilot gets out. And the pilot says, I'm so sorry it took us so long to get here. We couldn't find you. You were so far out of the sea lanes. And um, what we're going to do is you just tell everybody to get whatever they want to take with them and pile in the helicopter and we'll get out of here. Well, the man looked a little puzzled and he said, I'm here alone. And the pilot said, well, uh, that's, that's unusual because I'd swear when I flew over that clearing back there, there was three huts. Why would you have three huts if you're here by yourself? And the man said, well, that's easy. Uh, the first hut I live in. Yeah, I understand that, said the pilot. And the man said, well, the second hut, that's where I go to church. That's where I worship. And the pilot looked impressed, and he said, that's, that's very good, very good. He said, what's the third hut for? He goes, yeah, that's uh, where I used to go to church. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a good minister's joke. Yeah, the pastors love that one. A lot of turnover at churches. <laughs> That's good. Anyway, here in the, in the villages in improv, why don't mm-hmm. you tell our listeners what some of your favorite routines are? Oh, wow. Some of my favorite routines? It, pretty much anything I do with my friend John Case, who I know has also done this podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really like doing things like uh, Hans and Franz. We've done... Uh, Hans and Franz was a really good improvisational skit. What was funny about that was one day before the we started our our rehearsal practice, uh, yeah, our practice, totally unscripted. Yeah, totally unscripted. Um, we were just talking, and I said something to John. I said, "I'm Hans," and he looked at me and said, "And I am Franz." And next thing I know, Mike is saying. You know, we can open the next show with that bit. Yeah, and it was very funny. <laughs> and we hadn't even thought about doing it as a bit until then. But uh, I like that. I also like scenes with a hat or scenes with, uh, no, questions with hats and scenes from a hat. Right. Fixed Lines is also, I think, one of my favorites. Fixed Lines is, is a great skit with the right players. And that's for our, our audience. Let's explain that fixed lines means that one player is the story uh, narrator in control, and he or she can say anything. The other two players in the scene are given two lines that they can use in the script, in the, in the scene, on a piece of paper. They don't know what the lines are in advance. And then we ask audience members to tell our cast members where they are and what they're doing. And that comes out to be a pretty hilarious skit. I, I love it, especially the last one I did where I was told that we had a saboteur on board a submarine, and I was the submarine captain. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of funny for me because I was on a submarine in the Navy. Were you? Yeah. So I had a lot of fun with that one. Our first guest on the show was Don Wiley. Uh, his wife, Debbie Wiley, is in, is in our troupe. And uh, Don spent many years on a nuclear submarine running their power plants. Yes, I, I actually talked to Don just last Sunday. I was at his house playing samba. Oh, okay. I've been there a few times. Kind of have an open invitation any Sunday that we can make it. What What was your job on the submarine? I was a radioman. 
and I was really, you know, I, uh, I, I walked around with the message boards for the uh, officers, and I was also responsible for getting family grams to all the crew. Oh. And family grams was like a telegram, only it was sent over our radio waves, and every crew member had, I think it was uh, six or ten opportunities to get to receive those it's like getting mail when you're under the water that's that's a good idea i didn't realize uh, that our navy did that when you say you were a radio man i'm just wondering about that i guess you didn't use headphones as a radio man not normally yeah I, I, that figures that's why you had such a hard time putting these headphones on yes yes uh, they, <laughs> they, they were, were a little confusing cleverly labeled left and right <laughs> <laughs> not sailor proof not sailor proof no. okay how many years did you, were you on submarines? I was actually on subs for about two and a half years, mm -hmm. but I trained for a year and a half before I got on there. Seems like a lot of training for such a short time. Well, I, I love submarines. I just didn't like the military. I can understand both, but thank you for your service. And a as we move forward in Boomer Humor, what are the things that you like to do at Boomer Humor? Well, I, I, I we oh usually start our sessions of Boomer Humor with anyone who wants to tell some jokes, if anybody has any stand-up they'd like to do. I've really enjoyed that. I also really enjoy the scripted parts, even though, you know, I really love doing improv, which we do have improv at Boomer Humor also. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Yeah, but we've been doing some scripted scenes, and I just love being parts of that. It's just anything that you can do that you think might get a laugh. Right. right. One of the things that we've, we've worked on is the Carol Burnett show's Tim Conway, Harvey Corman dentist scene. And I'm sure that's going to make it into a public performance sometime soon. The Boomer Humor meets the second and fourth Friday nights at the Bacall Recreation Center. And it is open to anyone. You can bring your favorite foods or beverages. And that right now we're running practice sessions and rehearsals, but they are open to the general public at no, no charge. The Improvisational Theater Club will begin regular sessions again the 12th of September. We run the first four Monday nights of the month, but we're not meeting on Labor Day. And the meetings run from 6.30 to 8.20 at the Rohan Recreation Center. At Improv, anything can happen. You can come as a guest, an audience member, and wind up participating in a skit if it catches your fancy. If you just want to be an audience member, we're fine to have an audience. Well, you know, the thing about Improv is, and I don't know why it's always me, but there seems to be a tendency for me to play dead bodies. So I guess that means that I'm not a very good actor. I don't know. But at Boomer Humor... I really appreciate the fact that if you, I mean, when you come, if you have something that you would like to try, it, they're always open to whatever you want to try. If you have a skit, if you have a scene from, oh, we did a scene from Seinfeld mm -hmm. just a, a couple of weeks ago, and I really enjoyed that. My Kramer, I think, was spot on, especially mm -hmm. with my hair. Yes, yes. Yeah, I just, you know, my but hair was all spiky. Uh, and Kramer hair do on. Kramer hair, yes. And I actually... I might get get my barber to cut my hair, but she's a little particular about when she wants to do that. That's my wife. Okay. Speaking of playing dead bodies at improvisational theater, Rick, that's something that you volunteered for. But I believe I'm very very good at it. Yes, you're extremely good at laying down on a on a six foot tall ta six foot long table. You only overhang a little bit, <laughs> and then jumping up as the dead body, someplace during the, the, the skit or the scene. We never know what's going to happen or what the dead body is going to say. That, that's true. It's totally unscripted. Totally unscripted. We're going to have to add a piece of the scene where you play a cremated dead body and then <laughs> reincarnate yourself. But we can make up these scenes as we go in improv. As we do with everything else. Right. One of my favorite scenes that we're going to put into our September 10th show for the South of 44 Club at the Improvisational Theater. We do special shows for 
individual clubs that hire us to do them. To do them, improvisational theater club uh, raises funds during the course of the year to fund scholarships for graduating high school students that want to continue their education. Last year, we designated five hundred dollars for one scholarship. And by the time the year ended, we had $1,500 in scholarships to give out. This year, I'm hoping to do better. And the, when we do these shows for clubs, we charge a modest fee, far less than uh, a Elvis impersonator <laughs> charge, <laughs> but enough to gather enough funds to make significant scholarship donations to needy students at the end of the uh, school year. Currently, the only school that we're sponsoring is the Village's high, Charter High School. Rick, is there anything else that you want to add? Well, I, I really like doing shows for the different clubs. We've done, uh, since I've been with the club, we have done a show for the Carolina Club. Mm -hmm. I was in that. Uh, we also did a show for the Texas Club. And as you mentioned, we're doing that show on September 10th for the South of 44 Club, which is really close to, to home for me because I live just a few blocks from there. And I, I like the fact that we can usually gear our comedy or gear our scenes to the club that we're at. We did th special things for the Texas Club and the Carolina Club, and we have some surprises coming up for oh, the South have, of 44 Club. We have a really big surprise for the South of 44. The Improvisational Theater, as well as Boomer Humor, both uh, regularly participate in the Bohemian Spotlight Cafe, which meets once a month on the first Saturday from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Paradise Recreation Center. And it's not unusual to get an audience in there of uh, 200 people with an admission charge of only $2. And it's totally worth it, from what I hear. It is very good. It is a, a fun show. That's, that show has improved dramatically since 2018, the first time I stumbled in there. Well, this is going to be my first time at the Bohemian and also performing at the Bohemian. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited. Well, this show is not going to be released until way after Saturday. But it, it will be a, a, a great performance. I'm really happy with the direction that the Bohemian has gone. And hopefully... We'll get another big audience in there, and during the winter season, we'll have more performances by improv and or boomer humor, because we are developing some extremely funny stuff. Oh, I was going to, going to mention the scene that we're going to put into the South of 44 Club, which is reading from two old books. Oh, yeah. No, that, that's a very fun skit. Yes, yes. I, 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 we give each actor an old book to read from. And uh, one book is more than 5,000 years old and originally written on parchment. But we don't have a parchment copy. We have no. actually used a paper copy. And then we're, we're going, we have been using a, a book from the 1300s, uh, Dante's Inferno. But that's a very extremely big and heavy book. So we're, we're going to lighten that up to something much more contemporary. And when we put that together in a totally impromptu scene, it becomes hilariously funny. And any other final thoughts for you, Rick, before we wrap the show up? No, it's just that we'd really like to see some more people getting involved. You know, we, we have people from all walks of life in these clubs. doesn't matter what you did before you came to the villages or what you're doing now, but everyone is welcome and everyone has something to contribute. Some of the people who just you wouldn't even think would be into something like this come up with some of the funniest stuff. Especially at Boomer Humor, we've had people walk in as audience members and say, oh, I don't want to do anything. And then they see some, some stuff happen, whether it's a stand-up routine or a sketch. And they say, you know, I got a story I could tell. And they get up and tell a hilarious story. You, you never know it. Sometimes these people come back. Sometimes mm -hmm. they don't. Uh, at Improv, the same thing happened. We had a, a guy at Improv about a week ago, and he was a voice talent on the old Imus in the Morning show. And to look at the guy, you never know it, but he gets up there and joins us, and 
he was absolutely hilarious. Oh, yes. I, I really enjoyed that. And and that happens all the time. Now, so, was, was his accent Irish accent or Scottish? What is yeah, it? his name was something like E M M A S or O S Imus. But, you know, I, I, I find that fascinating. You know, some of our members are really pretty good at doing accents. And when you hear someone who has a natural accent talk without it, that is just as fascinating to me as someone who can turn on an, another accent. You all really believe that? I, I, I certainly <laughs> like to hear that when I, when, when I work. But you can just call me Boss Hog from now on. <laughs> okay, Boss Hog. Good. We're going to sign off here. Thanks, everyone, for listening. And we'll have a new show. Remember, our next episode will air live next Friday at 9 a.m. Or should I say pre-recorded? Bonus subscribers can get early access to episodes. Should you want to become a sponsor of the show, contact me at Mike Roth at RothVoice.com. If you know someone that you think should be on the show, send me an email at Mike at RothVoice.com. I want to thank everyone for listening to the show. The content of the show is copyright by Roth Voice 2022, all rights reserved.